thought I clicked that in. I did not. Oh, I did. Okay, you're going a bit farther north. The Sea of Umbalulas. Avalanche. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> kind of crazy how uh, fast it's coming. It's that movie Trevor. Oh, faster than the vehicle. Tremors. Yeah. Yeah. Avalanche. Yeah. Dirk, can you go on SPL? Can you go on SPL? <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, what was that? Sorry. We think it was just an avalanche. Oh. I don't yeah, think it was, was anything driving it. It was indeed an avalanche. Likely anthropogenic. All right, so you can see here, we're kind of in that valley, so that wall coming up. Yeah. It's going to come up past. A steep Roger. wall? Um, steeper than this. But we're, we can't really stop in time, so. Right. It. Coming up. Well, oh, whatever right. Dan, whatever Dan says, just be aware it's coming. It's coming. No, I see it. Okay, I'm coming up a bit now. Yep. That was worth it for the avalanche. <laughs> Never seen it like persist like that. That was like a snowball going down a hill. I was chasing it downhill once with Robos, and then I was watching behind me all the stuff, bomb yeah. chasing us, and came down to the bottom, and just buried the vehicle <laughs> <laughs> to the Zeus. We uh -huh. <laughs> had to come up on the wire to get out. Must have been pretty steep slope. It was. It was. <laughs> you have to come down. Yeah, it came up a little too fast. Let me get out ahead of it. I can't tell far how far I'm ahead of those. What are those? 100 meters? 50 meters? I can, uh, yeah, we don't need to see the ship. So that's 10. You're only 10 ahead. Seems like we're going so fast. We are going we're very going fast. We're going as fast as we can. There, you're just in frame in uh, Ada. The, that horizontal transect between core and cliffs and exit. Not doing. <laughs> no, we're not doing that. We're not, we're doing, not, no. not doing it. Okay, yeah. thank you. Kind of doing a super speed here, but. Z bias set to zero. I do much prefer watching this than midwater. Way better. Yeah, there's something. Just uh, <laughs> just watch that cliff. <laughs> Please. Yeah, I got it. Oh, I already, <laughs> I already buried the vehicle. Did you see that? <laughs> yeah. Let's let's we'll probably a foot of mud. Let's save the other one. <laughs> let's not bury the other one. <laughs> uh, Forty meters out. Yeah. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah. There's nothing I can do with the ship, so it's all you guys. Too far ahead. Oh, yeah. Huh. Go, Herc, go. Hope we don't run out of fuel now. What up? We gotta, we gotta come up. We gotta come up fast. Coming yeah, up. Coming up. All right, that's 40 meters away. Still less than walking, half walking speed. Yeah. 
Hey, Ed. Making Renny anxious over there. I know. <laughs> well, we're going fast. I mean, like, I got no Video. context for <laughs> um, We got a question about uh, lighting on Herc and yeah. if we ever use non-white light. Have we ever used like red light or other types of light? Oh, <coughs> ROVs have tried different things. I've done bubble collection where we did side lighting using blue lights mm -hmm. so we could really highlight the bubbles. Um, uh, ROVs used to use uh, different color temperature lights. Um, but uh, we also did some work with uh, mm, help me out, Renny. What was his name? Mike uh, Brennan? Brennan Phillip? No. Brennan Phillips. Brennan Phillips. Yeah, the low light camera. And he had a low light, light camera out, and we were doing, I think, no lights or just like the butt light on. Um, was that a different camera from yeah, different the, camera. Yeah. This, this camera does not have that level of light sensitivity. Yeah. It's a great imager for uh, underwater lit scenes, but not for uh, low light or different colored lights. Okay, so that should be the peak of the ridge. Appears to be the peak of the ridge. Yeah. And then there'll be some downslope right now. It looks like we are readjusting heading because the ship is going a bit more west than anticipated. Um, so that'll bring us down to the valley. Uh, just to double check there, uh, Dirk, yep. there's nothing tall in the hydrate uh, IP valley, is there? No, we don't have anything like that. No. Okay. So we may get a flyby of some of the instruments. <laughs> Depending on uh, by tall, position. like you're like there might be something as tall as two meters. Yeah, that's okay. We like can the figure camera tripods or something. We can figure that out. Oops. Where are you the heading? Where are you going? I don't know. Lost the pot. There you go. Full ahead. I'm gonna do that. Sorry, the ship speed has slowed a bit while we're we're adjusting heading. It looks like, like on the way, we'll be adjusting heading. Let's have time to catch up, hopefully. Man, if we're lucky, we might follow a cable right to the <laughs> to the IP. That would be cool. <laughs> no cable inspection on the way. <laughs> oh, nice. You want to bash the porch in and out? That's what we're doing, yeah. Thanks. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, you might get tugged Can you there. Get it dragged. Yeah, come down. Yep, coming down. Nice. Some of it off. Turned on the fog machine. Oh, I stuffed it. Good one. Right as I was telling the story about stuffing it. <laughs> yeah. Art imitates life. Life <laughs> imitate art. Like. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of Tina Foyers in the water column. You're going to have to seriously bash it to get rid of that. <laughs> 200 more times. It's like that game with the coins. It's kind of referenced a lot this season. Uh, like Is it? Yeah. Huh. Oh. 
not going anywhere. Yeah, you know, keep going and it's doing something. Go all the way in and all the way out, it'll... Uh, I can turn around and play backwards for a minute. Go ahead, Bridge. Roger. Okay. Okay, yeah, it looks good. Thank you. Uh, we might have a little slow, but then he's getting back up. Right now we're at point 0.8 again, but we did slow down for to like point 0.4 or something. Um, and our heading is now a bit adjusted to like, let's see, our bearing rather. <laughs> and heading, but that's regardless. Zero, six, two. I'll be recording this. <laughs> no. <laughs> Come on. Oh wait, it is recorded. I feel like I'm at ah. the busters or something. Oh yeah, with the little. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, that's. We'll watch it. I'm gonna stuff it again. Yeah. That's <laughs> <laughs> a respectable lump of mud. Okay. Um, in the next 50 or so meters, you may start to come up. No, never mind. Sorry. That's like 100 meters out. We might have some equipment on the seafloor. I'm going to turn my joystick down. That would help with full power. I wonder if you combined putting the porch out with stopping the vehicle and let your own uh, pressure wave push some of it off. Maybe even just at the speed if we're going now, it'll eventually kind of fly off. Yeah, we got a while to get it off there. Yep, still 1.4 kilometers for Hercules. 1.4. Maybe if I press the button harder. This is what we really needed the 3000 PSI of hydraulics for. There you go. I'm gonna time it. Full reverse. It's like trying to get a load out of the back of the truck. <laughs> Now I want to go back and see how that got on there. So, uh, any questions uh, coming in there, Marley? Some nice comments. I'm sorry for your silt covering, but this is extremely, all caps, extremely amusing. <laughs> 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 oh, that's somebody in the lounge. <laughs> yeah. Is that camera going out over Oh, yeah. The... Oh, yeah. Oh, nice. Oh, yeah. It's been going out. Persistence. <laughs> Two buttons. We're back up to a knot. Roger that. If I push the joystick any harder, it's going to rip it out of the console. Roger. So we're keeping pace with Atalanta. It looks like you're just kind of below it. Yeah. Um, should be flat for a bit. We'll have some stuff on the seafloor, ONC stuff coming up. Right there. And then hopefully a cable follow. Something on the left. Oh, disregard. I, I saw a dust storm. Yeah, it looked like your uh, Solus tape on a cable, didn't it? I just oh saw no. a cloud of dust, like. Oh. Kind of at the same time, something was in the mud there. We bring our own dust with us. Oh yeah. I'm 
might need a manipulator sweep. Mm -hmm. Slurp. Flush. <laughs> oh, it's breaking up. Yeah, break out the vacuum. Slurp. Starting to get out ahead there and a little bit too far to the north if right. eventually. It's fine for now, but. It might fly over that platform we deployed this morning. Chicken bucket. Yep. I guess it's just south of the hydrate site. Yeah, we are. Um, we may see some stuff. Uh, and our heading is about zero six three now. Bearing, excuse me. Slurp. We'll have an instrument to uh, get it off there soon. We'll have the minute out soon, anyways. Mm -hmm. There's a cable. I think that's the one we laid this morning. Oh, yeah. Chicken bucket on one side. Yeah. Okay, Jake, I got a fresh scoop for you. <laughs> Could you tell us a little bit about how the cables we put down on the seafloor here are different from like a typical cabling system you might have on land? Or what what like characteristics do you need for a cable to go on the seafloor? Yeah. Um, besides it being, it's very similar to a cable you might find like on land. Mm -hmm. The biggest challenge Wally here, land. except that it's waterproof, right? Right. That's the only thing. But for us, the biggest challenge is being able to um, mate and unmate these connectors subsea. So like this cable you're seeing right now, that's a Teledyne ODI with a, oil pre like a pressure compensated um, jacket. And at the end of this cable, you've got a mating pair of a receptacle and then the connector itself. And it's actually, as you put the pins into the sockets, it's got an O-ring that kind of wraps and squeezes all the water out and then inside of the sockets as well. So once you've made your connection, there's an oil surrounding it, displacing any water that could get in. Yeah. So the biggest difference is this kind of technology of displacing water as you're making the connection. Does it take a lot of extra pressure to make that connection happen? Um, I think... Is it like to 110 make a, pounds or something? I think it's less than that. I think it's oh. about 50 pounds or so, uh, depending on your alignment. Like sometimes it's really challenging to get them undone and they're bound but in general like a person can make these connections at the surface fairly easily so I would say about 50 pounds ish yeah, and of course it's not meant for people it's meant for ROVs so these connectors are actually quite big so mating pair would probably be a foot and a half long and like three inches of diameter for one connector But in general, these cables are kind of rated, whether we're using it in shallow water or deep, they're kind of rated for pretty much any pressure that we have on our network. And the deepest points of the ONC network are, you don't have anything below like 3,000? No, I think, yeah, 2,700 meters is probably the deepest we've got. Yeah. We have, yeah.
Yeah, but the cable themselves, they're not particularly expensive for like per meter. It's most of the cost is really in the connector. Yeah, that makes sense. It's always funny to think about how much more complicated it is to do something underwater, something like plugging something in or <laughs> connecting a cable, <laughs> something that in a terrestrial environment would not necessarily require a lot of time and effort and energy. Yeah, kind of the real challenge is um, not so much, well, the cables we just purchase, but we do make all our own housings. And so you have to make these housings to be uh, resistant to corrosion, have the, like, and there's all kinds of different kind of corrosion that you have to deal with, like sometimes anoxic corrosion, like they call it um, pitting corrosion, or um, uh, just general, I don't know, anything with ferrous has a hard time, aluminum has a hard time, so trying to Maybe select the heavier. materials for the project that can sustain the pressure. So you have to make these housings to, I think our deepest site is about 4,000 PSI. So it, it adds up pretty quick. Yeah. So because it's grade so seven titanium to work pretty well. Grade five titanium. Yeah. Six AL for the uh, titanium housings. This is what majority of the pressure housings on the ROV and uh, Pretty much anything we send to the bottom of the ocean, we want it to be, be there for a while. It's right. Be, yeah, know, that's the other thing is it not just needs to, in. yeah, not just withstand the pressure, but be able to last and be durable enough to stay down here with salt and corrosion and everything else for at least, what, usually a couple of years, maybe? Well, some of them, um, our nodes, for instance, I think their design life is 25 years. Wow. So, but they're also, um, not everything is. So it's sometimes hard when you have a project and you're picking material for that project. And if it's like a year or two or three, you kind of, you're still in that aluminum steel phase. And then like Danny was saying, once once you want something to be like a long-term project, then you have to start looking at that titanium, which is much more expensive. I was gonna say that's a much higher price point. Especially for things like um, the housings, just because finding the material in standard sizes in the larger, diameters is kind of it's difficult so aluminum and steel is much more available for raw material for raw materials anyways also you gotta look at when you buy a piece of titanium so say you have a housing that's 10 inches in diameter and a foot long you have to buy a solid chunk of material that's that size and most of that housing becomes scrap metal uh-huh and that's also probably the most expensive part about making it is removing that metal Yes. That you don't even want, you didn't even want from the first yeah, in the first wow. place. So, what we a lot of times do in our shallower sites is we get away with buying a titanium pipe or something like this, and then machining that to become a housing. But deep, it, it's challenging in the deep sites. It takes so much material to make a housing. Yeah, what we end up doing is a, a process called tree panning, where yeah. they use a wire EDM process, and they'll cut the center core out of the housing. And we'll make two housings. We'll have a big housing, <laughs> yeah. and then we'll make a smaller housing out of the center core. And uh, that's nice. That's creative. Yeah, we've got Economical. several housings like that uh, in Hawaii. And y'all yeah. do all of this in house at Owen? Like, does ONC have facilities and machinery to do this stuff in house, or no, do you have to send no, it off? No. Almost all our housings are sent away for machining. So we have uh, mechanical engineers that would design it. And, uh -huh. But then we will send it away. I we gotcha. do have basic. We have a, like a workshop with a lathe and a mill, but not, not of the quality to machine, like to the tolerances that these things need to be. Sure. Be made, but. So that's actually my day job. Yeah. I uh, ma I machine these uh, housings that go to the bottom of the wall. I do it for the University of Hawaii. Oh, so you're actually making them, or yeah. designing them. I make them. Yeah. So I'll stand up the lathe for hours on end, cutting titanium. A home do pan. the exact posi uh, precision measurements, and then I will actually test them before they end up getting deployed. That's cool. Do you enjoy it? It's the greatest feeling in the world when you are piloting an ROV, plugging something in, and the, what you're plugging in is the housing that was a solid chunk of titanium less yeah. than a month prior. That's a full project. To yeah. completion. Full circle, imagine. yeah. yeah. That's that awesome. Cool yeah, I wish uh, we could get into that. Um, I think it'll be downslope for the rest of the way. Fabricated off site. Right. So. 
all the electronics, a lot of the electronics we uh, build and bike assemble and stuff in house, but generally most of it is like commercial grade electronics that you buy off the shelf and then you just make a housing to fit it for a project and then you. But it's funny, um, some some sites you get away with just steel housings, you don't even have to paint it and it lasts forever. And then at Endeavor, aluminum and steel just dissolves because of all those chemicals in the water oh, associated right. with the hydrothermal vents. Like, I remember there was a stand that Tempo Mini was on yeah. that just kind of just disappears, turned, turned yeah. into nothingness. Yeah. So titanium does well there. And then uh, stuff like stainless steel inshore in uh, Strait of Georgia, mm -hmm. um, there's so much mud and that anything buried in mud doesn't get a stainless needs um, to recoat itself essentially with an oxygen oxidized layer. And uh, if it can't do that, it just dissolves as well. So if you have a stainless frame and it starts sinking into the mud, it starts just dissolving as well <laughs> over time. But I say dissolve, but it's corroded. Right, yeah. But So the bars, those are titanium. The uh, bars are titanium. They're, yeah. they're as close to the vent as you get. Yeah, pretty much everything at Endeavor, we try to use um, titanium. Mm -hmm. Titanium or the alternative for frames is plastic, like uh, fiberglass, stuff like that does it really well as well. Mm. Unless it's touching that vent, which is really hot. So the tip of the bar is titanic with the ceramic uh, temperature? Yeah, I think it's a ceramic temperature probe on the end, but that's just the, um, that's that just the end itself, the yeah. rod and everything, it's still titanium. Wow. Yeah, I was taking a look at the one that we pulled up the other day on deck and it's got that like the pyrite or some other kind of mineral is kind of encrusted around it. It's really cool looking in the it's sun. Pretty finicky looking with all the little thin little wires and stuff out. <laughs> yeah. It's so catchy. Yeah. Also, yeah, this cable we're following now is just connecting, I think, one junction box to the other. So the JB um, axis would be connected to Mideast, which is connected to hydrates, I think. So they're kind of like in a chain. Two, yeah, they're uh, in a chain. So oh, we'll they are. A, okay. We'll have a cable coming from the node down here, mm -hmm. and it would go to. I'm, I'm pretty sure it goes to um, hydrates first, but that actually looks like it's going to mid east first, then to hydrates, then to axis. Yeah, this is also the base map I have here is quite old, so don't. Well, it wouldn't have changed. Yeah, I don't know if that got. I kind of know where the backbone comes from. Yeah, I can check. Is that uh, another one we're gonna cross? Yeah, so it goes from the node to axis, or from the node to hydrates, and then from the hydrates, uh, it Hydrates has two cables going That's out it, from it, okay. one to Mideast and one to Axis. That makes sense, well, at least from the So schematic. the southern, more southern cable, it goes to Hydrates. This cable or goes to Axis. Where we're going? I think so, if that's the more southern cable, which it looks like it would be. That'll be the one that goes to Axis. Where's the ROV on your map there yet? Because uh, they do I'm cross a little bit. Off. They do cross once. Yeah, we're a little bit past that cr cross. Well, it's yeah, it's hard to say because now we're quite laid back, so I don't. The USB will be a little bit off. Um, it doesn't really matter as long as you stay on the cable on the south. Yeah. Even after they, even before and after they cross, you'll always go to access. Roger. Okay, Herc has another 900 meters to go. It's falling off to the north quite a bit. Why give it up? You're heading. I'm pulling you. Derek, do you mind if I ask you another question? <laughs> sure. Um, so I think uh, one or two of our viewers were pretty interested to hear about Danny's day job um, and what he does when he's not on the ship. And they also wanted to hear about what some of the other people here do when they're not on the ship doing what we're doing right now. So what's uh, what does your job look like when you're, you know, not out at sea? Um, yeah, so going to sea is, is, is a 
as a portion of my job, so that will take some of my time, but the most part, I, I have a team, I manage the field services team at Ocean Networks Canada, so we're a team of 10, and we have these offshore networks, but we also have an inshore network in Strait of Georgia, but beyond that, we have coastal radars, we have um, like an EW system, that's 36 seismic sites, like with accelerometers. We have uh, a kind of a different project called Community Observatories, where there's seven or eight, oh, I'll have to think, but um, of these, um, we call Community Observatories, and it's a shore station similar to this network with a subsea cable that goes to an observatory, kind of like the um, platforms you see here. And they're kind of sprinkled all around the coast. There's a few on Vancouver Island, some by Vancouver, there's northern BC, we have some, we have some in the Arctic, and then we have some on the east coast of Canada. And uh, so my job would be planning those maintenance trips for the other observatories. Do you guys still have uh, sensors on the BC ferries? Oh, we also have sensors on the BC ferries. <laughs> <laughs> and that's also part of my job is to, um, my team's job anyways, to maintain those sensors. And we're also expanding to more ferries now, so. What sort of There's uh, a lot of things that, that we try and do. But what sort of sensors do you put on the ferries? Um, so the cool thing about that is that because there's a daily run from Vancouver Island, from uh, both Nanaimo and Victoria to Vancouver, like the North Shore and, uh, and Sawasan, we get to collect those samples. And it's a CTD, uh, well, not a C, it doesn't have the D, it's just a thermosalinograph. And then it's got a BBFL2 and an oxygen sensor on there. Oh. So it's just, that's pretty much all it is. So is that like in a sea chest? It's just kind of like bringing it in or do you drag yeah, it? Yeah, so for the ones that are currently installed, like during dry dock, we had a small sea chest installed and with some valves and some mechanical valves and electronic valves. And then th we suck water in from there and have it run through the system. That's normally in like an engine room or something like this. And then goes back out the same sea chest. Mm. That's a good and idea using those routes that are already being you know, completed every day. Yeah, that's a, that's a very handy. And now they're, they've are they got this new ferries that they just built. Um, and they're going all across, like, the Strait of Georgia to different islands. And we're installing yeah. them on all of those as well. Because they were just fabricated with these sea chests already built. Right. Do you use uncontaminated uh, piping and stuff? Like, at all uh, coated piping in those? Or? So... These sea chests are specific for these um, sampling systems, so they don't share with any of the other ship kind of, I guess, any of the other ship functions, I guess. Sometimes sea chests are used for multiple services. Oh, yeah. But no, it's nothing special. It's um, stainless steel valves that goes mostly to, like, soft um, Tigon tubing that goes through all the instruments. Okay. Um, we, had, we do have a serious problem with fouling, though, like, um, Mostly muscles, the larvae get in, and then the muscle starts growing everywhere in the system. But on the new ones, we're really exploring with UV and stuff like that. Freshwater flushing, try and keep the maintenance down. Otherwise, you have to go, depending on the season, once or twice a month to go service these things. Oh, wow. Cayenne pepper. We also have buoys, profiling buoys, Cayenne on different pepper. sites that are pretty really? cool. It works, but yeah. Huh. Yeah, so I was going to ask, are you and your team just constantly traveling around? Yeah, <laughs> constantly, yeah. <laughs> Essentially, it's kind of, everyone is, um, a lot of them have similar skills, and so they'll build up trip leads for certain projects, and yeah, they're, they're away a lot. Like, I don't know, I'd say 20%, 10% of their year is away on field works, but normally on field work, but it's like probably a couple days here, 10 days there. So after, after yeah, it's not I, like a month or two at a time, it's like a couple no, days or a week or something. No, you'll have like a month between field trips normally. <laughs> Oh. Yeah, summer and everything normally happens in the summer, so right. it's pretty busy. I'm always surprised when we have an expedition that will come back in and uh, everybody at ONC is back in the office like that afternoon or the next morning. Yeah. There's no break there. Well, yeah, I come back and then I have to go, well, want to go and do go to the Arctic like uh, the weekend after we arrive, wow. so a week later. Oh, is that for your, your um, station up there? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so we'll just go swap some instruments this year. It's not a big trip this year, but. Is there a lot up there? Um, in terms of instruments, uh, yeah. that one is pretty cool. It's got a weather station, a shore camera, and then the cable subsea. And then there's a, um, there's a subsea camera that also kind of streams live data. 
like streams video, but the lights are only on five minutes every hour. And then we have a CTD, we have a hydrophone, uh, PCO2 sensor, um, and then a instead of MCO fish counter and a uh, shallow water ice profiler and oxygen sensor, fluorometer, stuff like that. And you're working closely with the scientific community to find out what data they're looking for and you're not just thumbing through a catalog of sensors. <laughs> just give me the classic suite. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. <laughs> no, these sensors were normally when the project starts, um, there's a it starts from like an interest from the science community and we build from there and then we go and install what they wanted. Cool. So Dirk, is that how deep are your underwater sensors up there? Are they <laughs> diver depth or do you have to oh, have a small much, RV or? It's very much diver depth. Um, up there, the observatory is 500 meters from shore and is in 10 meters of water. So okay. initially when we first installed it, um, it was serviced like by divers for the something. first few years, and then after that, um, we stopped using divers and started using vessels. Okay, so you do use an ROV to... Uh... Um, we know, uh, because it's so limited resources available there, and half the time there isn't an ROV in town, and just like little eyes, right? Yeah. So what we can get away with in shallow water like that is drag lines. So we'll have a drag line extending from the hydrophone, that's seven meters away from the platform. So you first drag for the hydrophone line, then you kind of lift by hand, you lift the hydrophone into a small boat. Oh, okay. Whoa. And then you follow the cable all the way back to the platform. Then you attach a float half somewhere along that cable. There'll be a lift line, like kind of just taped to it. And do the lift line, put a float on it, recover the hydrophone, and then just get, um, there's like, there's a group called the Arctic Research Foundation up there and they have boats locally. So we'll get one of their boats with an A-frame and come and pick up the platform. And wow. We'll service all the instruments on the boat at the dock and then redeploy when it's done. Oh, pretty cool. Yeah, the drag line is really, that's really a game changer. <laughs> because yeah. on all the other community observatories, we have these um, burn wire releases. So you have to go there every 16 months or every 18 months. Otherwise, the batteries die, and then it's a real challenge to get them back. So you go there, you burn these wire releases, and then you wait for a float to pop up. And once it floats at the surface, you transfer the line to a winch and then you winch it up. But normally, normally it's between, those are between 20 and like 120 meters steep. A lot, lot more uh, efficient than uh, acoustic releases, shallow water acoustic release? Um, they're very, um, very inexpensive. So that's you want to uh, chase the cable for a while? Sure. That's the key. And then what we've also done is we yeah, also have a, um, when we do have control of the platform, sometimes we lose control of it, like lose comms. But when we do have comms, we also have a, the ability to trigger them from shore. So through the junction box, you trigger the oh, okay. burn wire. That's cool. Yeah, but those, those we use the access cameras as our camera on those. Yeah, I can jump in. Dirk, how long have you been at ONC? How long have you been doing this type of stuff? Mm, I did my co-op just before I graduated in 2014. And then I graduated engineering end of 2015 and started with ONC. Oh, so that was your first year when we first were out together? On yeah, all I think. Was yeah. it 2016? Uh, Just following 15 the 15 was when I was out uh, so first. So I wouldn't have been there yet for that. I started like. But then six, 16, we were also out. I think it was a back to back situation, if yeah, I Yeah, I, I think I was right. on that one. It was like we did it in spring and then in. Uh, or we did it in fall and then in fall spring. spring. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I, I think I was on that cruise. Yeah, and Doug was there on one of those. Yeah, Doug would have been on the one before, on 2015. Yeah, I remember you guys had these cool ONC flannels. I was like, man, they're so cool. You still cool. have those. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> I was there when those got purchased. Yeah, I was like, what is happening? ONC happen? has the best swag. They do. I love my hat. I love the shirts. It's so good. Yeah, I really like the, the hats. The hats are like and my the favorite. Tukes. I've never yeah. got received the toque, so. Mm, 
No, I don't know. I think the Nautilus swag's pretty good. T the Tully swag is really good. The Coast Guard yeah. swag, but you have to buy it. Yeah. <laughs> so it's not really swag. Is it expensive more. or just like regular? No, it's like regular price, yeah. and it's it's pretty cool. They've got like their flannels as well and their hats and. Oh, they have uh, those boonie caps now. I just saw John wearing one of them. The floppy Dude. brimmed like sun hat. Yeah, they'll laugh at me. If I wear that, because the one year they all had, all the deck crew had mustaches. Oh, right. So yeah. the next year I showed up with a mustache and they all had grown beards. So it's like, oh, <laughs> no. that's pretty bad. <laughs> Ed, have you worked on the Tully? Yes, many times. Uh, last time I was out with Dirk, I got the chief okay. size stateroom, which is normally Tammy's, but <laughs> Tammy couldn't make it, so I had to fill in for her. Uh, I'm they didn't have time to reappropriate the rooms no. for you. <laughs> you can't have that you're up a room, whole deck so it's kind of a but I, I uh, well long story I yeah I, I like to, I actually like the crew state rooms because then you, you have it by yourself you don't have to worry about I work much longer days there um, so you don't have to worry about being quiet for your roommate yeah we'll be going down slope so there'll be a bit of paying out as we go I think of my all the cruises I've been on, Ed has been on almost all, all of them, with yeah, the exception uh, of maybe a few. I think, well, or Tammy. Yeah. Um, I think I was out at MTC when you were at co-op. I think so, yeah. Yeah. Is co-op Canadian for internship? It's Canadian. It's, <laughs> what is that? No, it's, yeah, so. it's a teaching internship as part of an academic program. Uh, you, Dirk, you can probably yeah, describe so it better. A lot of programs have it, but specifically in engineering, you um, from the University of Victoria, if you do um, your engineering there, you have to take four co-op terms. So they're like paid terms. Um, I guess like internship, I'm, I don't, I'm not familiar with an internship, but so you go, you get the opportunity to work with different engineering firms and get experience, but you, to graduate, you have to do four, four months of these co-ops. That's so. great. That's really solid real world experience, it's, right? It's really good because um, you really, once you graduate, you already kind of have your foot in the door with four different and, companies. And for and the employer, it's a, you get to test before you, you hire. Yeah. You know. Yeah. You so it is four different ones? You can, use, you can do the same ones. Yeah. Um, a lot of people, a lot of the people on my team are ex-co-ops and uh, they, Go ahead, a lot of them did multiple co-ops. A lot of them did, so. Yeah, it's a great program. I, I like it. There you are. Uh, pilots, did you copy that? Yep. Yeah, okay. He's going to stop and readjust and then do the rest of it, probably at the uh, heading into the wind. Okay. Yeah, the ship's gone. Where's the ship? Yeah, I, I can, if you want the 50 meter grid, I can zoom out to yeah, see the right. ship. But it's really fun doing this this offshore stuff with the big ROVs and the big ships. It's really cool. But the small small boat stuff, you do essentially the same things, but just up a small boat and a very compressed trip. And that's really fun as well. So Yeah, good. I I enjoy both as well. It's uh it's really fun to be out in the deep sea and doing the big you know, full ship operations with a big team, but, uh, you know, the more kind of DIY uh, style of just doing a small boat with a couple people and just making it happen is yeah. also very fun and rewarding and just a different way of doing things. Yeah, it's, it's completely, it's completely different. Uh, well, I feel like something like this is a pretty polished operation. Like we've got this really dialed in when you're just like, out in a small boat with a couple people, they're just trying to like make it work. It's a bit scrappy, <laughs> just <laughs> like, you know. It can get very scrappy, yeah. Yeah, yeah. but especially you know, that's what field work is about. You just figure it out. Especially if you're going to different towns and using the resources that are available and the sh boat, you know, the boat, the operator, and you're kind of feeling it out. And dealing with the weather and everything else that yeah, comes really, with it. Yeah, you're really on the mercy of the weather. But then everyone, doesn't sleep on board. You go to town. Everyone normally yeah. goes to a restaurant. Yeah, you know, have yeah. your own hotel room. Like it's the drive up. Sometimes we drive up to. Um, to we have to get our work truck up there because we have so much gear. So it's it's like a twenty 
what is a 25 hour drive oh wow so you know, normally four of us in the truck so you stop along the way and it's nice pretty, it's a pretty fun trip hope you like your co-workers in the truck <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah i do 20 hours of i guess it helps when they're all ship people so they understand that close quarters <laughs> yeah they the normally stretches don't sign up for the trips if they're not really into it yeah and that's the thing, right? People people choose these jobs because they're excited about it. So it's pretty easy to have like good coworkers. Yeah. Definitely don't yeah, do it for the pay. Yeah, has it come down a bit <laughs> more? <laughs> We're still going downhill. This uh, this next bit is a steep drop, steeper than we have been doing. So, <coughs> and then we'll reach a, uh, a valley floor. Valley floor. Cohen C's got these expeditions really dialed in, though. They do three or four or more a year with a variety of vessels. They've got the deck plan on where everything's going. They've been mapping out dive plans, and then in situ they can shuffle the deck and still be very efficient. Do you find that, Dirk, that uh, kind of that amount per year, obviously things break and need to be replaced and what have you, is that kind of like a general upkeep or is it like, oh, we could really use another cruise because we're certain, you know, things are phasing out faster than we can get to them? Um, so it, it kind of depends. I would say the average year we have three cruises. Mm -hmm. um, the first the first cruise of the year is normally in March and that one's pretty much dedicated to Strait of Georgia. And we always try to get out to Folger, which is out of Banfield. We, that was our first dive on this cruise. Mm -hmm. uh, just because the visibility is so much better um, for both Strait of Georgia and Folger. And then normally the September, we try to do one in September, and we try and do one in June, July. Uh, you can't really work inshore on those, so inshore is gone. One cruise would just not be enough. And then, I don't know, depending how what how much work you have for that year, not just maintenance, but a lot of times there's new projects, new cable A's, new things like this. So you, it kind of, it's not just maintenance, it's always kind of expansion too. Yeah, I imagine then you expand a bit more and, and eventually you hit the line where you need more time. Yeah, and these oh. CTDs, I don't know how many, we kind of did a quick inventory of how many CTDs we have. Like, ONC probably owns over 100, if not uh -huh. 150, or let's say 70 in circulation, I'm not even sure. Wow. Um, and the, all the Seabird ones, for instance, are on a two-year cycle for swapping them. So you have to visit these sites and not just offshore but it could be inshore or it could be community observatories or whatever but <coughs> there was some chatter to be done is that because of like sensor drift or yeah they go back for calibration after two years yep. and that's just the ctds right so there's all kinds of instruments i was going to say there's some chatter on rv tech about seabird ctd maintenance so you would probably be like a really large client for them i yeah. think so i'd imagine because most people probably just have a couple I would think right yeah I'm not sure who, who the main clients are but um, I'm sure we're one of one of the big ones yeah yeah that's luckily we have um, kind of in our operations department or they call it physical operations department we have the testing development department and the field services department and my kind of my the other manager He's the testing development, so he deals with all the RMA and testing and prepping of instrumentation. So uh, that's why I'm not 100% sure on how many of these things we've got. Mm. Uh. <laughs> Hook's getting attacked. That's a big coral. Sp coral or sponge? A sponge, I think. There's a sponge, yeah. yeah. So Marley, what's your uh, day job when you're not yeah, in Yeah, I, I forgot I was going <laughs> to ask that. I 
I do a little bit of everything. Um, I was actually, I was just reminded of a field work project I did when you were talking about your field work stuff, Dirk. I had a similar sort of thing where me and the three other people crammed into a car with a bunch of um, gear and equipment and drove from North Carolina to the Florida Keys, which is exactly a thousand miles. Oh. And we did it all in one go and did a really cool uh, coral reef conservation project down there where we were um, taking coral fragments and putting them onto a table and then tracking their growth rate over a period of a year. So we went back down like four different times and I got to document that whole project and process and it was awesome. Really good people, really fun job to be scuba diving every day and working in warm water. Um, so yeah, I'm a, I'm a full-time freelance science communicator. So I do photography, video, and writing for a lot of different science projects. I specialize in documenting oceanographic research expeditions, but that's not the only thing I do. I work with other marine biologists and, um, and also other scientists. Like I, before I came out here, I was making a series of videos on some cancer researchers at uh, UNC Chapel Hill where I used to work. So, uh, but yeah, the deep ocean science is kind of my, my jam. So I do that as often as I can. I also work with uh, Woods Hole and uh, a couple other organizations, so. Nice. Yeah. When you're but not in Estonia bungee jumping with grizzly bears. <laughs> Ed has this whole caricature of his uh, version of Marley. <laughs> right. Mm. I also do really love climbing big ice covered mountains. Um, I'm a little misplaced being on the East Coast in North Carolina. Yeah. Yep, makes really no sense. I would yeah. really prefer to live in the Northwest. So. Like ice covered as in the Olympic, like those, what do they Ice call covered them? as in like the Cascades. Yeah, the Cascades. Yeah, I am. Um, like the big ones, the, the volcanic ones? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. My yeah. brother's just gotten into that. So he's just, like he started last year, but now he's got Adams and St. Helens and. Sweet. Nice. What's the yeah. other one? He's done like three or four now. Baker. Uh, I don't know. He has not done Baker. Oh, we're going up to Baker when I get home. What is it? It's yeah, I did Hood in 2017, yeah, hood. and that was super fun. We did Shasta a couple of times. We've done some of the smaller ones. What time ones. of year do you go? I believe May is the very best month for mountaineering. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I was talking to Mike about this, uh, Rennie, and he yeah. said that you were interested in getting into mountaineering. So let's yeah, go. Yeah, I've, I've hiked a lot in the Cascades and stuff, but not like, you know... I wouldn't classify it as mountaineering. <laughs> so yeah, like you to, need like crampons. Like to breach into that. Like crampons, yeah. ice axe, ropes. Yeah, I think that's the definition there. Yeah, right? yeah. The crampons and It's ice so axe. fun. I love it so much. And uh, yeah, I, I was uh, when I was in grad school. I had some surrounding grad students who had that as a field area. So we would take uh, undergrads up and um, do some glaciology stuff and. Got to do some dendrochronology near glaciers to look at, um, uh, kind of establish climatology and the microclimatology in the region. That's awesome. Yeah, the first uh, research expedition I ever did before I got into the deep ocean stuff was on a volcano oh. in southern Chile. So I joined a group of like 10 or 12 um, geophysicists who were installing seismometers on this 10,000 foot volcano. It's one of the most active volcanoes in South America. Which one is it? It's called the Yaima volcano. Yaima. I um, was near Aconcagua for my research. Oh, down cool. There. But that's on the Argentine side. Yeah, this is in Chile. Oh, yeah, man. it's like right on the border. You guys get to go to some really cool sites. You know what's funny is uh, Adrian uh, who used to work at ONC? Adrian Round? Oh, yeah, Adrian Round, yeah. No, not Adrian Round. Adrian Shum Shumlik. Shumlik, yeah. yeah. Wow. She and I, for our master's, we both had the same advisor, and our study site was in this really remote, uh, like, section of the Andes that you can only get to with, like, you know, on these mining access roads. And uh, that, like, we had the same very specific, like, not many people have been there. And now, and then we both were on a cruise doing. You know, we like from 5,000 meters up to 5,000 meters down. <laughs> it's like, what? How do we both end up doing that? 
Were you on that cruise 2021, was it? Uh, yeah. She was on here for a I month. Oh, yeah, yeah. We were both uh, talking about, we were both representing University of Delaware. We had our shirts. That's it's like funny. we planned it. <laughs> there we go. It's coming back. Do but I was like, I know your name from somewhere, and it's because she cited my thesis because she was still <laughs> continuing on that work after I left. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. yeah. She's in Calgary now or something. Yeah. You guys were talking about climbing, I think, two or three times now, maybe three. I've run into shipmates at the REI flagship store in Seattle. <laughs> yep. I'm not surprised by that at all. Oh, yeah. And I can see that. That's actually like where, the, where they're born. The <laughs> they spawn from there. <laughs> the, the last one I saw there was Colleen Peters, and I just yeah. looked at her and said, of course I see you here. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> this expedition is brought to you by right. REI. Yeah. REI. folks at REI. Are not a sponsor. Could <laughs> They've knocked that off now. They don't. We're still kind of following this this cable. It uh, veers a bit, but while we have the leash, we can do it. Um, the ship is roughly over the IP and is repositioning its heading. And for those not in the know, REI is the American American equivalent of MTC, not MTC. Well, MEC. Yeah, MEC. MEC. Sorry, MTC is where they work. <laughs> Mech is Mech is the cool so store. The same thing. There's a Mech in Victoria. Is it there good? Be. Good because I yeah, need some hiking a, boots yep. for my yeah. yeah. If you're in Victoria, the the leash there. I would yeah. also recommend checking out the store um, Robinson's Outdoors. I think ah. I've been to that one. That's I like really a little like small, it. like yeah. a smaller. Yeah, yeah. So check that one out too. That's, yeah, that's I'm, I'm gonna need to get some uh, hike recommendations for up the island. It's a funny store. It's got all the like similar to Mac or REI but like they have a lot of the like the really good brands but then the whole upstairs is like a fly tying <laughs> I think oh, wow. how I think was I, there yeah. how was there this much right. fly fishing going on around here so you have a downtown fly tying shop that's huge yeah I gotta leave the cable a bit yeah that's right it'll come back around yep we'll, re city. we'll reacquire it um yeah, you're at the end of your type of yeah I don't yeah. feel more comfortable giving you any more. Yeah, no, it's, it's off to the... <laughs> yeah. yeah. Off uh, to the left. It should come back. Well, we know it does because it's attached to some things up ahead. <laughs> yeah, it has to be attached to the platform, otherwise <laughs> we've got problems. It's coming back, yeah. slowly, but surely. <laughs> the outer mana keeps getting yanked, and I'm just like... <laughs> I, can see, you know, I can see the angle on the tether there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. The and then... Uh, Rennie in the off season, he goes home on December twentieth. He's back here January seventh. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do in those seventeen days, Rennie? <laughs> oh, I enjoy my off time. It's great. <laughs> Spend time on another see boat. No. <laughs> Just come out of this guy. Uh, I see the side layout deck. Oh, Just want to put it back. Give you a reset. Is that all right? It's, yeah, like it's Dan, starting to come there? back. Uh, yeah, I'm missing this one. Uh, well, we can just put it here, no big deal. I just want to make sure we know where to go. Um, oh, okay, you good. might get... It looks like we have our heading now, and uh, we might get taken okay. for a bit of a ride because it went up here. a yeah. bit, so... Uh, Dirk, we may acquire the seafloor jewelry before we can settle in because the ship is uh, kind of getting into position. Acquire the seafloor jewelry. Yeah. <laughs> We might see it, but not be able to settle in and do anything. We might yeah. drive by some of your toys. Okay, yeah. so first what we <laughs> want to do as we approach this, um, we're yeah. just going to keep following this cable to the junction box. Yeah, It's kind of the first thing. And then from the southern the southern kind of face of the junction box um, towards the west, mm -hmm. kind of the slightly the northwest, there's a camera cable, okay. blue or green palmet. If we follow that, the first thing we want to do here is put down the larval traps. So okay. that's going to be our first thing. N near the camera. Sound okay. Like near the camera, yeah. So yeah. specifically, he wants it seven meters northeast. That's not right. Six meters from the camera. In any direction except for where the camera is currently pointing. Bridge nav. We, we can hold position here. Disable first light. Okay, Roger. Thank Ish. you. Yeah. Um, okay, so oh, coming CTD up on monument. the monument tripod. We're gonna, yep, yeah. So just 
Uh, oh, we're going to keep it moving though, right? Yeah, it'll probably breeze past. we got to get se settled back in. Oh, right. no, that's not the CTD <laughs> monument. That's the Kongsberg monument. Oh. What are we Very doing? Very fouled. It's a monument Where? to Kongsberg. The canyon access sonar? Where? I can't that, even see it. Is that the name of that canyon access sonar? It says Kongsberg monument, uh, Kongsberg on monument. I don't know. That is uh, 22 meters at 240 from the IP, if that helps. It does. Looks like it needs a uh, so same with the TVOS. Oh. We've been following cable number three, yeah, and we've just arrived at the IP. All right, I'm just going to drop a target here. So Tonight. I don't know if Martin is watching, but. If he is. And you're roughly above it. So I'll give you ONC Martin. Quick target. Yeah, there. ONC Martin, Martin. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure with just yeah. because I'm looking at that Kongsberg and it looks like it's quite a biofound. Some fouling on there and whether Kongsberg. he would want us to use the T boss on that. But I'm gonna let him reply to that one. I think it was Martin and I in like twenty thirteen or so though tried to use the iridium phone to make a call from the Tully. I lost the plot. Where's the monument? It's oh, a uh, nightmare. Right, right here. Okay, cool. While we're just waiting, can we zoom in on that face of the monument, of the instrument yeah. on top? Yeah, you should be able to. Yeah. If you can reach it before you get pulled off. Yeah, I might get pulled, but. Well, Fabio wasn't kidding with all the kelp yeah. coming down. That's pretty good, Jake. I can zap it. All right, want to zoom there? Yeah, coming in. <coughs> oh, yeah. Oh. Current's really blowing. Yeah, current's blowing. Um, Data, do you have that point? That's good enough, hey. Might if we might have to, if we have time, maybe we can come and give that a wipe later. All right. Wow, <coughs> look at that current. Yep. All right, I'm gonna go ahead, bridge. I'm gonna turn into it. Uh, Roger, let's do. Um, yeah, let's let's do five zero meters. Five zero meters bearing one three zero. Oh, this looks like a what net. Is that? Net. Is that a net? Yeah. yeah. Thank you. ROV trap. Watch out. ROV trap. Just stay away from this. Yeah, the current looks like it. Oh, that's uh, interesting. I don't see anything. In the okay, water pilots. Column. Um, I just called in a move from where Atalanta will probably end up at the after the ship. Um, fifty meters at one three zero. Which will put us, should be put us where between the IP and the camera. So, so follow this cable, right? Uh, Maybe yeah. if I have enough yeah. leash. Yeah. Uh, Benny, can you log that location of that net? Yeah. Can do. Can so do. So we can avoid it. And what's yeah, the yeah. there's another I'll monument to your left. It. I'm right above it. Yeah. What's the approximate size? Would you say a five meter chunk of net? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Be about the length of Hercules. Yeah. Yeah. A little bit more. Logging net. Terrific. Fishing gear. Caught in cable. Cable. Fabio, on, you're on seafloor uh, though. Your fish are still here. The fish still like it here. It's not up. It was none of that was really up in the water column, right? They don't look like they're facing into uh, the current. I think it was pretty entangled, but yeah, yeah. Just good to have a. Piece oh yeah, of for net. sure. In case the currents change and it floats up or something. That's kind of a chunk, big chunk of net. Okay. You're gonna get pulled off before you can go do anything. Yeah, I'm so. Afraid. Um, so that's a CTD monument, and so then um, and that cable goes to the camera. Yeah, yeah, Roger. We're uh, repositioning a ship, and we'll have to get set back up because we got kind of we'll get over dragged before uh, we can. What yeah, is that? Come back. That monstrosity is the camera. Nice. Uh, that stopped panning or tilting or both. Fabio. Where are you heading? You're heading uh, both. Both. Just. You're gonna go okay. follow Argus and then just turn around. Turn around. Did we bring around. the T boss? We did bring the T boss. Yeah. Kay. Just are gonna we going reset. That? Although it yeah. wasn't in the dive plan. Yeah. So <laughs> we kind of brought it by accident. Yep. I could check, but I think there's some biofall in there. Oh, we can definitely clean it. Um, I'm just wondering. Okay, Remember you should be good there. I don't think it's gonna hurt any further. Again? Sorry, I missed that. All right, so back Last to the time monument. we were cleaning so one and then it's rapidly yeah, started working. Yeah, uh, Atalanta's not moving your way yet. You but you can at least get the out of well, they do the ship uh, move. That's what Daniel's um, doing. Um, just maybe look for a spot to put your larval traps yeah. and play, get the ROV to land there. 
and then um, oops, I'm just talking to Fabio. Sorry, guys. Okay. Something in front of us. Yeah, anything that we have, up here, I think that's the camera. Um, we can get a good position on it. And yeah, have enough leash to it. Yeah, and, and Atalanta will hopefully be settling between the camera and the IP. Okay. So I'll have a leash we'll to do a bunch it. of stuff. Get a nice position. Yeah, that'd be good. In the meantime, let me do a quick DVL reset. Don't do auto XY. Okay. Good to go there. Right above the monument. All right, Roger. Yeah, so maybe. I've got a camera. Canyon. Axis. We just flew over, camera. right? Camera. Get yep, just getting a position. Yep. 2023.07. Depth, 984. OK. So, are you scoping out larval traps, uh, yeah. landing zone? In theory, yeah. about <coughs> six to eight meters away, so we can still potentially Roger. look at that from Ideally the camera. Ideally this side, so the currents coming in our face when we deploy them. Is that, yeah, what side, uh, what, what can, cardinal can we, direction do you want to? Can we see where the camera actually is looking at? Yeah, yeah. let's go down. Because the, the, the pan and tilt broke, so it's looking this way, right? Is that the camera? Can't tell. Can't tell. We cannot see. Uh, it looks like the lights are pointing to the right. Um, okay. That's right, so... It w I think I it's all the way under there pointing st directly to the oh, right. Is that it there? Yeah, above the lasers. Uh -huh. That's the light. It's on a uh, T-arm, yeah, a light at yeah. each end, camera underneath. I see. Oh, yeah, yeah, I see. The and pan. just to confirm, we don't want to land anywhere where the um, where the camera is in view, right? Yeah, so from here, we can go to the to the right here and just drop it five, six meters away. So we're right wherever right. is comfortable. We're landing. Let the current take me back. Um, and you'll have the Kongsberg behind you, so watch out for that. Okay, that's about six meters. I have that target-wise, yeah, about six, seven meters. Is that okay? You want to back up further? Probably no, that's, yeah. that's fine. That's good? Okay. Yeah. Can we sit down here? Um, I don't know. Is it going to get muddy? Yeah, whatever you guys think. If you want to auto XY and deploy them, whatever, um, whatever y'all want to do. Currents uh, significant. Yep. Atalanta will be crossing over your head. Maybe I can shut down gently. Right now. Very nice. We go for craft power? Yep, go for craft power. Craft power coming on. Buble on the arm. Maybe put it looks like porch is in. I don't know if you want it out or not. Uh, that's the long arm. That's the right arm. Let's where see where is it stowed? Is it in the starboard? It's in the starboard box. Starboard, yeah. Bubble yes. cameras in manual iris. See if the magnesium are dissolved already. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, you're pretty confident it has not. What time we... we I think we dove at 4. Uh, we've four been diving for 5 hours. Oh. And about 10 minutes. All right, just uh, pulled out the okay. starboard buy box cam. I'm um, ready to sample yeah. tryout when I'm here. But that will be already. Ready. Okay, so buy box cam.
cam is yeah, so I don't know, it's only been 18 hours. Okay. No, but I mean, it, ma it matters the, the time okay. that it's been underwater, right? Yes, right, since good. 18 hours. Everything feels good. No, but we recovered the vehicle, right? No, I know, but okay. the first dive was 18 hours ago. Yeah, yeah. So it's been only been wet for 18 hours. Sample tray out. It's all still, still there. Maybe the inboard, so the inboard that one is going to be one of those sample uh, devices. Pardon? The monkey's fist is one of the things. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Two, two monkeys fists. So how do you tell Fabio if they've already triggered? Well, there's that rubber cap on top. If that that was not there, that that meant that it had been triggered. Okay. Looks like the caps have not deployed. Yeah. But it's hard to tell from that camera. Okay, back in. So good news. Good news. Yeah. Where did you want the push course from? Uh, Anywhere. Ooh. The freeze fail. The freeze that gets point. everybody. That was um, a specific place. I'll check could the be dive close to the ADCP. Okay. Can be so we'll do that later. And we can do on one sit. Pardon? One sit or one position. Yeah, yeah. Once we place it, we'll take some. Okay, where do we want to put this? Right here. So uh, just uh, if I heard you right, you want to do push course here as well? No, no. No, no okay, no, sorry. Later on. So so the camera's to the left, right? To our left. It's kind of straight ahead to the left. Here I can brighten Oh, it. right there. Okay. And it's pointing not this way. It doesn't look like it. Pointing About seven meters right. ahead of us. Exactly. Perfect. On the, on the sonar, it's seven meters away. So you can just put right here t and the other one about one to two meters away. Number three. You want to circle on the screen where you want it. I'll set it where you want it. Yeah, take Put some. It take, take some. I want some pictures. Oh, I got his. Gotta move my uh, SOA down. There we Although go. I hear a screen grab is better because uh, it's centered. Okay. Nav, this is data. Could you get me a coordinate of this? Yeah, that's. I right have there. it up on uh, high pack survey right now. Okay, I'll just bring that up. Yeah, because sure. he wants a meter to two away between the two. So. Yeah. And the other one could just be placed off to the right. Yeah. Is that, is that flat here? Yes. All right. Looks Thank you, Nev. Did you, sure. did you see we did a kind of a bottom follow all the way over? Yeah. It's pretty interesting. Along the cable? Uh, not from between the, fr you, the second half was along the cable, yeah. The first stop was kind of Sloping down the slope down and slope up okay, to hydrates and then the cable. Yeah, I don't see the monkey. I don't see the monkey's fist. So it's kind of interesting. Uh, you don't see the monkey's fist. Maybe get it up on a bigger. Do you want the sample yeah. salvo? Uh, uh, I can put it on the top yeah. left. Uh, you can see the sampler, but I don't oh see a monkey's geez. fist. That was. Uh, is that it? Might be right in the middle. Is that? But forward? No, I can't tell. What is uh? I don't know what I'm saying, uh, so I'm not gonna say just it. Maybe like um, nudge it over or something. How did you attach the monkey's up? fist, Fabio? Can I take your top right monitor? It was to the yeah. edge of the box, so I think that's the one. Um, yeah, for one of these guy. There you go. Uh, oh, there it is. Is it right in the middle, right? Yeah, one looks like it's opened. One of the samples. Yeah. And then the monkey's fist is right next to it. Oh yeah, I see on the on the. Bottom. On the bottom, just above the parking lot. I think it was yeah. just now, I think. Think so? I think so. But it's okay. I think so. I, I think you're right. We can go back to the video and look. Oh, uh, yeah. No, we still have the ADCP to connect. Still a push course to do. Still might be cleaning some of the um, transducers and cleaning the camera lens. So there's a little bit to do. Yeah. Sure is, but three hours or so after Looks midnight. Like the, the aim is to recover at three. Yeah. So keep ourselves busy till three, if not, so that I the.
they can do it on a fresh crew change. It's going yep. under. It's going to flip it, I think. The oh, yeah. Yeah, it's under. under. Oh, you might have to pull it's from, from that the other, black. You from can the see other the side. It's going to be tough. But electric tape there. Yeah, the black electrical tape might be the best <coughs> from, your, from above. Yeah, like how come like that thing going? Like right at 7.30, there's a piece of black electrical tape. Can I grab this in the middle without it damaging it? Just, yeah, hey, Danny, just scoot it to the uh, aft side of the box so you can see it. The other camera there. Yeah. Just close your jaws and put them in between and scoot it back a little. Yeah, it looks yep. like it goes from where your jaw is underneath, so you might have to try and pick it from that electrical tape. Can you show us where that electrical tape is you're talking about? Oh. Yeah, it can't draw. I think they, he sees it. Do okay. you see it, Danny? There's also a ring right in the middle. Ooh. Yeah, you uh. can see it kind of like a little ring. Right where the camera's, the camera's tearing. Blur. Yeah, right there. Thing though, that that's how you know it's the thing. Good night. Oh, well, right. Good night. Okay. okay, so that one just triggered the other side. <laughs> well, at least now we know which two triggered. Yes. And we know when they triggered, so. Where? Yeah, the monkey's fist went underneath and over to the other side. Probably because we shortened the monkey fist. I at the know. last minute. Did we? By Trevor's request. Uh, I don't know. We, we Basket in. Box in. You want me to hit the dive salvo? Yep. Thank you. That's okay. It's no yeah, it should be okay. We usually uh, lock the monkey piss just in the outside of the bio box. We float up when you open the drawer. I should have rigged the ISO and I didn't mess with it. Oh, that's interesting, Fabio. The rubber broke, but the thing is still closed. Okay, so where do you want this? Uh, right there. That's right. good, yeah. Right oh, you want a circle? <laughs> right where it is. Oh, just so one. Can we zoom in on that one just to get like a visual of yep, one the second, status? Let me line it up. I feel like just one Go for little, zoom. one Video. fishing Coming line in. behind the ROV on this device. Holding at the tops. Okay, so only one, only one figure. Yeah, that's pretty good. Not bad. Seven out of eight. Huh? Seven out of eight. Seven out of eight. Eighty-seven and a half percent. Can I come out? I'm just curious because yep. that, come that, on. that thing tripped. It doesn't look like the rubber is broken. Oh, this one, yes, but not the other one. Looks like the rubber is intact. Would the rubber still fall off if it's not springing in? Well, it was attached to the center ring, so now we're going to lose. Yeah, that's going to go to the C4, to, to a piece of rubber. Oh, okay, so that's, that's fine. We'll pick it up. Rubber Next doesn't last very long. Okay. Um, okay. When you are ready, we're going to go back to the instrument platform. All right. So stow that arm. Yep. Fabio, you're happy with these I'm coordinates? Happy, yeah. Um, Should we Sean, do east? Have you got a coordinate for these? Sure have. All right. Should be 25 meters due east, and Atalanta is in position that you should be able to reach it. Perfect. Arm stowed. Okay, next we're going to try and we're going to be doing some ADCP work. And for the pilots, um, when we talk about the old one, there's two ADCPs down right now. The old one weighs 70 pounds in water, and the new one weighs 77 pounds in water. So just, and you've got...
60 pounds of uh, bee bags in the front of your porch. Yep. Do we still have both? We do. They're both okay. jammed into the okay. toolbox. <laughs> yeah. Should be there. Look at all those fish. Yeah, deploy the net. Trying to avoid that net. You said 25 meters due east? That's where it should be. There's a cable. Yep, and the net. And the net. Stay away from that. So, the dive plan says find the new ADCP. So that's ADCP we kicked off the um, porch. Yep, I have a target for that. You do? Okay, great. Where's this IP? Got anything in your seeking? Yeah, it's right, seeking? you can just see it. There it is. There it is. Mm -hmm. Danny, hit preset one for Jake. Yeah, booblet one. Okay, um, when you said the new stuff, uh, do you want me to... So that's a 60 meter run. I could put Atalanta between the two, or are we going to just be here at the IP for a little bit? No, so the first part here is locate the new ADCP that was placed during the earlier dive, find a suitable location for the new ADCP 55 meters east of the instrument platform. Okay, we did place it 55 meters east. Oh, you already east, did that. And it was, at the time, a suitable location. I don't know if that has changed, if there's another. We placed it you know, uh, where we were supposed to place it, for according oh, to the did. last okay, dive plan. Oh, you did, okay, so this yeah. is just a, a glitch in the dive plan here. One second. But we could inspect if you want. It'll just take time to go there and back. Oh, look how big that fish is. Um, yeah, it would be useful for me to see it. Okay. Just so we're all on kind of on the same page on what's going on. Roger, will do. Okay. So we're at the IP now. I will put Atalanta. So you're going to be driving due east, and due Atalanta, east. I'm going to put uh, 45 meters. Yeah, 45 meters, 086. Bridge nav. One step, 45 meters, bearing 086. Thank you. I don't think I've ever seen sable fish for sale. For sale? Is it just like thrifties or? Have you I seen see black cod? Yeah, no. <laughs> no, no, I don't know where they sell this stuff. Uh, at the finest SC, have you been there? Yeah, they'll or they'll have it in certain uh, markets. Yeah. Like, but it's not every. It's not like it's Save On Foods. You won't get black. Mm, probably not. You might see it at like a uh, fairway or something fairway like that. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Is it is it good? Huh? Good fish to eat. It's pretty good. Yeah. Uh, I've heard it's buttery. Buttery. I think I try only once actually. Yeah, it's kind of rare. I think it's considered fine dining food, okay. for sure. Yeah. It's quite expensive. I think you would find a catch black cod on Denver's catch. What is not expensive in Vancouver <laughs> Island? <laughs> right. <laughs> you might run out of tether before you get there. Yeah, finest yeah. at sea, I feel like that is. That's, that's like where a, you get the good a, stuff. A boutique. Yeah, a boutique that's fisherman. pretty good. That, yeah, that's a Take fancy. A fish. Treat yourself. Halibut steaks. They have good stuff. Oh yeah, they've got they've got good stuff there. Even bait scraps, remember? Like when you used to do the the uh, the bait traps. I would yeah, go there six a.m. before the cruise to, to get fish scraps <laughs> from salmon. And uh, ten meters uh, from even okay. even from grocery stores, you can get um, oh yeah fish scraps for crab bait and stuff. <coughs> I like this one for the fine stuff better anyway, and that one for the farther, yeah, yeah the mezzo for the farther view. We make some sausage, my brothers and I, so 
then you oh. can go and ask for fat, and they'll just like hoard the fat for you, and you just go pick it up. The butchers. I'm really impressed with the resolution of this AK. It won't tell you what it is, but it should tell you there's something there. That could be a good picture. All the dives I've done, I don't think I've ever seen so much fish. So, Fabi, are you going to go through all these pictures? Yeah, this is a lot of fish. It's Which pictures? Are you going to go through all of them? Well, from the coral site. Uh, this, I'm looking at sea log. Uh, which one? My bottom screen or top screen? Yep. Oh, you want to see, yeah. Uh, the questions? Should be due east of you. Right due now. east. <laughs> so the, the pictures from the corals, yes. See how, how good of a job he did. See if I'm, uh, uh, welcome back. Uh, well, this is the SCF. Did you open a field during the... Yeah, they look good. They look like the whalebone I think so. JPEGs. I couldn't open the raw. Oh, yeah, on this one. Uh, what are you, you can also just come look at it over here if you want. But we put on the extra fine, right? So. Yeah, so I don't know what that nope. does. Fish. Hmm? I was looking for it, but I just, it was a fish. According to one of our viewers, sable fish is best described as the quote unquote filet mignon of Alaskan white fish. Huh. Yeah. Sounds right. So so we should, we should bring one up. Yeah. <laughs> I keep thinking I see the ADCP, but it's a fish every time. Let's see if one will swim into the bio box. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> <laughs> we closed it. Oh, no, I think that might be it, unless owner. Yeah, we've had. There's the bead bag around. that we dropped, so oh, okay. that tracks. We've had all kinds of fish kind of yeah, I think accidentally be brought up. Should be just beyond that. Yeah. Are the albatross still stalking us? Yeah, <laughs> Are they anywhere, still outside? <laughs> anywhere at Barkley. This is, they love it here. They love us. They're just waiting for us to pull up the net. I think there's, there you see the other the commercial oh, fish fishings again. around here. So I think they just yeah. wait for that. Okay, should be east of the beat bag. Also because we east are in a submarine canyon. They concentrate on canyons too. Albatross? Yeah. Oh? There's more food, more pelagic fish. But there, is there more productivity at upper slope than there is here? Could you no, say? No, here in the canyon. More here? Normally, yeah, the, the canyon, the topography helps to steer the, the, up, the currents upwards. But doesn't that current go towards upper slope? Yeah, yeah, but normally the phytoplankton blooms, they concentrate okay, well. on the on the rim. So more like the node would be more productive than upper slope. Yeah, you say? yeah, because okay. yeah, they're kind of well spaced these observatories on huh, with the hydrates node, upper slope. Yeah, I guess the people were. Someone were was thinking. Someone was thinking before yeah. my time. Before my time too. Should be about 15 meters out. Right That's a big one. Yep. 10 meters out. Target. Yep. Target. There it is. Raj. We've got a question about what kind of jellies these are that we keep seeing. Are they all the same? Do we these know? These are Borrelia rufensis. Majority of them are, yeah, the same. We have a couple other species here, but those are, yeah, Borrelia. Oh, there we go. Can you put the uh, 
Oh, the rail cam back up when you get a chance. Yeah. Not that you can see anything out of it, but. Poor rally. Yeah, we yeah, have Parafila and Tiburonian that also occur in this area, but this is the, definitely the most abundant. If maybe These a are few really others. cool jellyfish. <laughs> Is a current endeavor. Mostly. There's so much stuff here <laughs> in our vision. <laughs> it's overwhelming. Yeah. Lots of I don't know, I don't know what to look at. <laughs> yeah. Guiding us. Wait there. till you get to upper slope. That, that spot is looking really into the current. Really cool. Do you have the leash or no? No, not yet. Okay. At the other site, the upper slope site, we see massive halibut. That's kind of cool. Oh, I probably do have the leash. What would you like to do here? I just want to um, see where it is. I okay. just wanted to get eyes on it because uh, our next step will be to return to the instrument platform. Okay, Roger. it's right here. Yeah. <laughs> you, you, it checks out. <laughs> so help. I have it about roughly from the IP about probably f 58 meters. 58, so okay. About, about in the... In the pocket of 55. What's underneath you there? Is that oh, that's a track, an RV track. So what's the uh, what's the grand plan here? We're we gonna pick this thing up and take it back to the IP. Uh, so yeah. this one stays here. So this is its deployment location. I just wanted us all to see it because I don't think anyone here was. So right. Maybe it's only a few. Well, so we, we gotta I take everything out me. of the transducer, right? Yeah, yeah, we will do that. But what the grand plan is to go disconnect the old one, and then lay the oily out in this direction so we can plug it in. Okay. So that's the that's the overall next hour. There's something to left. Okay. So, so we need to go side. to the old one. Now we go to the IP. It's on the, the old one's on the IP. Oh, it was moved. Okay, got it, got it. Do you see that thing stuck on the left side of the crate, Turk? What's that? Do you see that gelatinous thing stuck on the ADCP on the left side of the crate? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Okay, I'm gonna um, move the ship a bit closer. Oh, then, if we're done here, yeah. Yeah, we're done here, yeah. Okay. Sounds good to me. So I'm going to put you in range. Actually, you should. You can just turn around. They're almost there. I think I just have to move Atalanta like 10 meters west. I'll give you 50. 15 hey, Dirk, west. do you think we're plugging this thing in within 30 Bridge minutes? Map? No. Okay. Well, There's your answer, Greg. One, and five Steph. meters west. I think it's going to be probably an hour. Thank you. Maybe a little longer. Actually, okay. 20 meters, 20 meters west. Hey, Sean, do you guys have a special Thank chat? You. That's yeah. Yeah, just for data stewardship. You guys are special. Well, I wouldn't say that. We, we just more organized, maybe. <laughs> I'll tell that to the stakeholder engagement chat. Oh, we're also participating in that. All right, what do you got? You got a some kind of oh, tripod on your left. There's a tripod. Do you want me to mark that? It's an old monument of some kind. Oh, this is an old vertical array, hydrophone array. But it, mm. it's nothing in there anymore, is there? No, I don't have it on the current target list. I think yeah. it could be the rotor. Should we get a location of this then? Yes, please. All right. Yeah, Kay. Rennie, if you could yep, get it. that. Got it. These are what we use for Tom's two, uh, two element arrays. And we will be recovering one just like this at Cascadia um, 1026B when we pre cable lay. Tom Dakin. Oh, Dakin. Okay. But I don't know why it, that's just a layer. That makes no sense. You're going to the cross? Yep. Turn around. You should recover it and drop it off at Tom's house. <laughs> <laughs> we are recovering one already, so we'll drop you that Tom. one off at Tom's. Oh, there's lots of jelly. Eh? But I don't know if it doesn't have an array on it, then I don't know what it is. Something below us there. I don't know what that was. It feels like we're in a jellyfish video game. Yeah, it is a bit mesmerizing. Yeah, between the jellyfish. Especially when we face into the current. <laughs> yeah. It's racing. The lasers. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it should oh, be west of west you now. Roger. And 
Atalanta's on the move now, heading west. It looks like we can't reach both, so we'll just have to slide back and forth west and east, but it's not too deep. Should be very nearby. Wait. There it is. Oh, I got it. Yep. We can't reach both, but we're going to move an oily cable. That How long is the oily? 70 meters. 70. We should... Uh, oh, that looks fun. I could probably place it, but you'd be kind of like at, this, at the edge of it on both sides, you know what I mean? So if, in order to do some work there. So what, we, what we're going to do first here is we can see the oily or the ADCP that's on the platform. Yeah. That needs to be lifted and placed on this side. Uh, on uh, if we don't have enough scope on that oily, we might have to pull the bungees off the oily first. So over here. I think I'm at a leash right now. I think it's going to be yeah. a little tight. Just wait a sec. So. Sorry, say that again, Dirk. You I think we're going to be a lo little tight on cable. You so want to take the ADCP and do what? Um, so the first thing we want to do is disconnect this ADCP, but right now it's hung on top of the platform. All right. So we want to take it off, but it looks like the cable is a little tight for us to be able to lift it and fly it towards the east, which is here. We can't just leave it on there? Whoops. No, we're, well, we have to recover it. I know, but can't we just unplug with it on there? Is if it you can land on the on the instrument platform, if we can go have a look, maybe that will work as well. My crab's still there. Then we don't have to move it twice. Yeah. There's a chance that you can, I don't think there's anything that you can damage up here. So if you can land there. Yeah, we can. That will save a step. Oh, Just there's the a cable. Looks yeah, like there's a, a cable on that side. There. There's a crab. But if we're going to do that, then we want to take the bungees off first, because once you unplug it, then we want to yep. be yeah. able to fly it out. Can we see where this cable goes to? Uh, is it just wrapped once underneath? I haven't seen that section yet. Isn't there a monument to our left? Uh, watch out for yep. Monument. That orange cable looks like it just wraps underneath and it comes back up over the top. Yeah. 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 Down under the platform. That makes sense. And you can see the hooks here, right? That's what's holding it. The hooks, yeah, are holding yep. it on the ADCB yeah. onto the platform. But let's, um, that's some other crap. Can we... Can we position from here and just look that way in case there is like, yeah, in case it's like pinned there or something? Double check with this. Yeah, and it got you. Right there. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Good eye. Can go around the other way? I'll just go around it. If I have enough leash, I think I should now. So we've got quite a bit of time, so slow, just going slow is fine. It's no rush. Up and over. Up and over. That's perfect timing, too, because Pete will be here, and he loves doing very complicated, intricate work. Sean, do you know what the issue with this ADCP, or is it just regular? I think it has a dead beam or something. That has had one Well, there's some time. heavy bio falling in there. I'm not surprised. One of the transducers oh, really get pulled. collect. All right. Have you seen the ones in, in Strait of Georgia? Oh, those are much worse, right? <laughs> <laughs> or the one at Upper Slope without an enemy that's about this big. Going a little more west for Atalanta, if we're going to be doing on this side and stuff. Or you're kind of far away back, from yeah. it. Yeah. I just wanted to make sure I was away from that yeah, platform yeah. when I came down. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but let me know. I can move over west. That looks OK in Atalanta. Man, this is so funny. It's like, yeah, it looks like driving it in the snow. Comes <laughs> under and is coiled and then comes up and over. It's yeah. got a lot of slack on it. Yeah, but I'm just wondering if there's a pull pin or something down here. Just, it's, it'll be good to know. Right. Looks like it's just draped over the top of it. Snuggle up to it a little closer first, Jake, with your yep. so you can see it in your bubble camera. They got that instrument behind you. Yeah, you can see it on the starboard side, the monument. I'm trying to fight the current, it's hard. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's looping. 
cable looks clear. I like how you're leaning into it yeah. like that's going to do something. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Hung around the bullhorn there, it looks clear. Um, and we can kind of see from the top camera, you've got these two guys connecting it to its harness for lifting. Yeah. Looks like the cable goes behind some stuff that it's secured to, doesn't it? Yeah, I'm, s I'm specifically looking at this here. If we can zoom in there, because look, it looks like there's some kind of... Looks like it goes behind something on the left side, too. And then it looks like a pull pin here of some kind. Like a, there's like a little... Oh, I see. Yeah. So I just want to make sure we know what, what we're dealing with. Can we land in this area? Yeah, I can land. Don't okay. land. Don't, don't land. Don't land. We can... Uh, we okay. can grab on or get closer. Okay. Let me jump in there, Jake. Sure. Watch change of video. Yep. There's that monument right to the right in the current. I'm hard, current's hard over. So. All right. We might be blowing into the um, we might be blowing into the CTD monument here. Potentially. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that crab has been on there all day. Oh, he was there at the early. He was there like at 5:30 or six. This is doing rounds. Yeah. Oh, there's two of them. It's their home, I guess. Do you think that's attached to anything? Like, I wonder. I wonder what that is. Looks like chain to me. It looks like bullpen um, circles. Oh yeah. So Dan, what we're looking for is just to kind of. We don't need to pull anything off. I just want to know what the cable's attached to before we're going to try and fly with it. Yeah, Roger, me too. I'm having a look around. Give me a minute here. It looks like it's... Uh, looks like it's in there, doesn't it? Well, it looks like there's a rope tying it on there. I think that, yeah, and then we saw from the other side there was that circle that looked to be like a pull pin. I can't tell for sure what's going on here. Uh, video, are you online yet? Yes, sir. Can you zoom in, please? Yep. Good. I don't see a pool pin. I think we're about to cut it. Okay, so there's definitely, def definitely a um, rope. Okay, go ahead. So we can't pull it up yet. What is this here? Does that look like anything? I don't know. The cable? Come around there and see. We're gonna, it's going to be a little messy. I'll have the current behind us. Okay. a zip tie or something? Yeah, I'm going to have to go upstream and turn here. It'll take forever to get around there. Can you look at the uh, vehicle with Palenta, please? Oh, you are? I am. It just, uh, just smiles so away. Notice there's a lot of stuff in the water. Sean, I see it What's now. What's up? Everything said. goes well, and we call it five shakars, and I'll be fast asleep mm -hmm. and then the, the sub comes back on board at 4 a.m. Can, so can you want. put them in a bucket? Sure can. In the no, fridge, well. uh, yeah, the vertical that. fridge. Yep. And they'll have at four degrees. Plane. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That'll be great. And I process them in uh, 7.30 or 8 a.m. Okay. After, after breakfast. 
Yeah, but but in exchange, you got to tell me how you actually prepare on. these over over comms, so people at home can understand. How do you prepare those? Yeah, like what kind well, of processing steps are you doing to these sediment cores? Ooh. But, well, he's got you. I was gonna tell you just to unscrew the them from the sub, put them in a bucket, and bring it to the wet lab, and then. We'll Tomorrow, with the help of another Did pair of hands. They need to go in the fridge as well? They need to go to the fridge. Oh, okay, what's the step, Fabio? I just said that twice already. <laughs> uh, anyway, so, yeah, we're going to slice them up. We're going to strew the cores and slice in one Double centimeter bear, layers. Right on How many slices uh, are you looking for? Uh, at least ten. Okay. Depends how deep the core is. Hmm. Um, Sometimes, if uh, we got a good catch of deep core, we can have a, up to 20 slices. And wow. then for, for a bunch of different. Yeah, that looks like a um, zip tie. Looks uh, like a zip tie, yeah. There's some colleagues that want to do uh, uh, so that strike one sedimentation that rates. Break it. Yep, so we do lead 210 uh, yeah. um, isotope analysis. Okay. So it's mostly sedimentation rates you're looking at with these well, cores. Also organic matter, fractions, uh, carbon, nitrogen, and we also are doing uh, microplastics in, in a few replicate oh. cores. We're slicing them up, probably up to 10 centimeters mostly. Okay. Tops. Yeah, that's a lot. So yeah. this thing was deployed with the... Uh, Good explanation. ADCP on there. Right. Meant to be removable. Meant to be removable. Huh? Uh. So, uh, we can break that zip tie by pulling on that rope. That could be that one of the things we have to eventually do. Is that what you wanted me to do? Yeah. I slipped up on it a little bit. Morning. Morning. Coming out. Video? Can I get a zoom? No, you don't need no. a zoom. Just okay. grab the thing. Okay. Just slip straight up on it gently. Oh, nice. Okay, you can drop that. Okay, so the one is free. I can pull um, that... Uh, if you can pull the bullhorn bungee, if you're in a position where you can do that, I can do it, Dan, if you want. It's well, up to you when you want to do what. I'm concerned that I can't see what's happening Crap with the cable plate. on the other side because of the current. Uh, I'm going to try and... I'm in a good position to get that I know, off. I know, stand by. Um, <coughs> so the issue is we got a pretty brisk breeze here. Yeah. And the cable is... You know, we see it tied on one side of the ADCP, the downstream side. I don't know what's happening on the other side, so I need to get a better look at that. Yeah. Um, but in any case, since it's tied there. I think it's, um, I don't think it's tied. I think there's a pull pin from when we looked at it first from a broad angle when um, Jake was flying. I think there's also a pull, a, a circle you can pull below to undo that. Right. I'm pretty sure I saw that. Um, so I think it's a it's it's gonna be like a manual pull on that one. From what I'm seeing right now, though, unplugging it in situ and getting the cable out could be challenging. Yeah, and I don't think we're ready to move it before we pull those pins out. I also see this. Do you get? I can't sew it on the prompter, but off this hook. Is there a line going there, kind of on the hook holding the ADCP to the frame? You can kind of see the U-bolt sticking yeah. out. Is so there a rope there? What I'm thinking is we need to get this thing off the frame and get it out where we can... Yeah. Okay, agreed. Get around it, because, yeah. I I can go try and have a look here, and we can, we can try and unplug see it and pull it out of I there. I think there's a pull pin for that one. 
you can see kind of the circle hanging down there. Hold on, let me land here again. And yeah, I could reach over and grab a hold of that knot and see see what what's what. Hold on. Uh, yeah. I don't know if he'll reach it from here, but you can kind of can we zoom in on it maybe to see? But I think yeah. there you can see a a loop there. Zoom in there, but yeah. You oh, can't yeah. see it from here. I'm pretty sure I saw it from the other side, though. So you think if we gra grab yeah. something in there, there's a, a release in there? Let me grab that knot and see there's if I can wiggle something. There's a pull pin somewhere in there. Um, and you reckon it's on the outside, eh? On the side, on the inside of the ADC. Feed. It won't be on the inside of the platform. It would be on the outside. Okay. Yeah, see if you can free it up there. Okay, zoom wide. But uh, just hold on one second. Um, so when we when we face this broadside, I know it's difficult to do from this angle. There were three rings kind of hanging there right. below it, and I'm wondering if that releases that rope on both sides. I wonder if it's just one pull to release both. Oh well, yeah, maybe. <coughs> Move your, pull your nip out. I'll see if I can come around there. We can park it. I'll have another look. I would just be surprised if they didn't do that. Okay. I want to see the other side of it. It's going to take a minute, but I can, yep, I think take I can get over there. No problem. Maybe. Come on, here, you can do it. Oh, the cable's free on this so side. So there's a rope there too, ish, holding the frame to the. Yeah. So I'm thinking we can get the cable off and fly it out of here. Well, it's still attached by that rope, right? Yeah. If we get that rope loose. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. But I think it's a pull pin underneath. Underneath. Yeah, it's weird. It's a great place for a pull pin. There's also this rope that I don't know what it's for. Careful, Vile Cam's about to hit the ADC feet. Oh, good catch. Light years away. I told you to design those things, sir. I didn't. <laughs> Not this one in particular. Not this one. Well, yeah. you know, it's Simon. I, I see the pulp in there now. You see it? Yeah. Nice. Okay, that's good. I thought I saw it earlier, but no, I don't see it, but... I see it now. If you see it, that's great. I yeah, is that a pin? Yeah, I see it, I see it. Like that thing? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe the circle fell off somehow, I don't know. That's what I was gonna grab. It sure looks like a like an open knot. You know when you're settled out. You happy with that, Dan? Uh, yeah. Nice and slow in there by the cable. You're really close to me, so I can't. Okay, come out of there. So when you go in there with a manip, you can't put occlude the view of the jaw I know, with the camera. So if you can't get in there, I gotta reposition. Okay. Yep.
push the porch up. Sean, when was this deployed? Uh, when was this device deployed? This, this instrument, or this instrument platform. Mm, you'll just have to give me a sec. Okay. I'll find that out for you. Because I think maybe we can look at an old dive plan. Oh. Diagram. This is something. What is this? Here. It looks like a pull pin. That's a polypro line. Yeah, but... Go ahead, fire. Like Get it. Okay. Oh. Um, hopefully, the, if we can track that down, we can find the dive plan, and then we can see what the plan was for this. No, nope, too close. It was deployed in 2021-03, so March of 2021. March, can you look up the... Um, would you have access to the dive plan of the expedition? Uh, I'm, I might. Um, I'll take a look. I think, I'm thinking this is something. Oh. Just lift the whole thing up with the porch. <laughs> Don't think it'll go. See that thing for a minute? Do we want to zoom in and see if that is a pin? No. I don't know. Not sure. I think it's meant to be pulled from below. So you might be pulling the whole rope through there. Really? Right, yeah, the rope's coming, so it has to be pulled from below. Oh, that's convenient. So this is the below pull. The below pull. Yeah. Um, I mean, I don't think... What it means is I think the pull pin is you have to sit in front of the ADCP to pull it. I don't think you can pull it from here. Sit in front of the ADCP. You can try pushing down on the pin, see if you can get it down that way, but wait, you won't. Wait a minute here. Okay, I see what I gotta do. Oh, that's the loop. Yeah, that's the loop. You can kind of see it. Yeah. But you don't want to pinch that cable, because this is the cable we gotta use. So, Dirk, what are you looking for in particular in this dive plan? Is there details regarding the deployment of the ADCP? I'll take a look. Yeah, Dan, unless you can clearly see it. I can see it. I'm just worried about getting in there with a the nip and damaging the cable. Anything, any visual aids? Nothing about the ADCP, yeah? Well, there's this, but it's, I wouldn't necessarily say it's very descriptive. <laughs> <laughs> Don't let it go once you pull it because